This is way too honest, but I'm going to say it anyways. Hi, and welcome to the Way Too Honest podcast. I'm Tara. I'm Kristen. And we haven't actually seen each other very regularly. Well, I mean, I've seen you in passing, but I, we yeah. haven't actually talked in like two weeks. No, it's I, like my Tara battery is so low. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> so what's been going on? So if you heard uh, the previous podcast, I'm so sorry. A little bit of a recap because uh, I'm doing two podcasts in one day because I am, you know what, committed. Um, let's see. Since I saw you, I went to iParty, became... <gasps> I'm so jealous. I didn't... This was not my generation, but I'm so jealous. I became such a feral ass rat. Let me <laughs> fucking tell you. I screamed my fucking head off. I'm not even... I was crying during so many songs and i just like the only thing i can put it to i would imagine would be like a religious experience okay but just to be clear i party is a dj event where all they do is play songs from the disney channel and nickelodeon and nickelodeon fantastic yeah so when they played um demi lovato la la land and like you're just surrounded by like your friends and you're screaming at the top of your lungs i'm not even kidding my eyes were just like watering and then spoiler alert one of the last songs he did was the climb oh Oh. my god i'm like oh my god you know fucking crying my eyes out like a buffoon i saw your stories where he was doing bet on it and i was like okay i Uh, was in a high school musical too i stopped after the second one but i was just like on your stories you didn't have you seen the third one i'm older than you man oh (laughs) my god i pieced out pretty fast but I do love the second one and I love it. And then, so when I saw on your stories, the bet on it, as I'm watching your stories, I was like, bet on it, bet yeah. on it. And everyone was screaming it. Yeah. And for that like story, I was so jealous that yeah. I wasn't there. I was, I, and I was telling Ryan, <coughs> sorry, right before the, like right before we went, that's like my Super Bowl. It like to be in like this era right now is so cool to me because like adults are into this well yeah like growing up right like i was never there was never going to be like a disney channel song concert sort of thing yeah but now that something like that exists and i'm old enough to like appreciate it almost Mm -hmm. because i haven't heard them in a while i mean even though i have i listen to them only in the car all the time um (laughs) but like to go and then to have it be like a whole community of people basically yeah i mean also every, in love every, with it. you don't go to that unless like you're ready to lose your shit for some disney songs yeah and that's a, that's a bunch fucking, of like-minded people i fucking lost my shit i lost my shit so fucking bad i saw the shoes you wore those were fantastic those fucking hurt so bad i took them off in the middle like a fucking hood rat but really? it's okay <laughs> <laughs> just like never know they were like completely bedazzled cowboy oh, yeah. boot ankle ankle boots right yeah fantastic um, i bought them that day uh because you cannot wear a sequin dress with like normal shoes um when we came home i had sweated through sweat sweated whatever uh through my sequin dress it was disgusting um seems like evidence of a good time oh yeah so ryan and i are now going to the vegas one (gasps) shut up yeah when is that we're uh it's the 27th of this month yeah we're going we're okay i really are there still tickets available yes there are really yes i'm very tempted to invite myself you should come um and like i sincerely hope that like none of our parents are listening to this because i'm so sorry uh mom dad or in-laws or whatever um i want to go so badly i am willing to go face my parents and spend time with them (laughs) and his parents to go like before they were like oh you know when are you coming out because you can't go to vegas and not check in with your parents it's like is it like a huge slap in the face well yeah i mean i imagine it'd be yeah Saying that we stay at, you know, Ryan's parents' house and they watch our dog when we leave. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I was like, you know what? I want to go again so badly. I'll I'll just, we'll just deal with them. We'll just go home. It's fine. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I'm going to go again. I'm so glad that was such like a, a, like, cathartic religious experience for you. Oh, my God. And now. That's the type of religious experience I'd want. Um. So, yeah. Had he, like, had Matt Bennett, um literally passed around a piece of paper asking for information to join his cult i would have done it i would have given him my social security number i don't care i would have done it donated your um, entire life in perpetuity to like working on a cruise ship like absolutely. scientology absolutely <laughs> absolutely whatever he wanted i was going to give it um the only thing i will say number one mm-hmm. 
Um, the last song that they played was a request because like they said goodnight to everybody. Well, who got to make that request? I don't know. But then also, was there a requested... Make-A-Wish kid there? No. Um, but the request was Sneaker Night. And like, because so when we got there, the Where line was Sneaker Night from it's Vanessa Hudgens. I don't know every song in oh, Disney Channel. Oh, OK. You need to come to Vegas with us. And I will educate <laughs> yeah. you. Okay. Um, but the last song was a request and like people should not have had to request that that should have already been in your mix number one number two you know when you when you have a dj or like when you go to like a set i don't go to very many maybe if any um but anytime i've ever seen a dj they like cut the songs you know like you don't listen to the whole thing he didn't all he did was play the songs as they were yeah it was literally like a playlist so he's not a dj he's just someone hitting play Pretty much. That's what it felt like. But he was like interacting with the crowd and it was fun and stuff like that. So he's an MC. But yeah. Okay. But you know, so it was like, that That was my only other thing. Like, did they play Go Your Own Way? No, they didn't. I know. See, there were so many things that he should have played. Man, 2002, my, that, that song ruled my life. Oh my God. When she was like crying, she, I go, go my own way. She took her tea necklace off. Bitch, I was fucking ready to go. I was sitting mm-hmm. there crying about some heartbreak I hadn't had yet. Homegirl like, has some pipes. Vanessa Hudgens. Have you seen um, Tick, Tick, Boom? <clears throat> have I seen Tick, Tick, okay, Boom? Okay. Just want to make sure we're on the same page here. Don't because listen. I, unlike you, I actually don't. I'm not a musical girly. I don't like musicals. We need to fix that, number one. No, there's so much. Uh, uh, but I loved tick tick boom i yeah. love tick tick boom more than i love rent and i saw rent on broadway it's the only show i've ever seen on mm-hmm. broadway she also did an incredible job in rent oh that makes sense that she was in rent too yeah but oh my god especially that song called i think it's just called therapy that was so i mean i can't imagine how long they had to practice i mean andrew garfield who is not a musical yeah. guy who clearly mm-hmm. is though yeah um from this movie but tick tick boom was so fantastic she yeah. blew me away so here's what I will say about Vanessa Hudgens. Some people are going to die. <laughs> We've talked about, you know, like sexuality a little bit. <clears throat> so I would say on like the bisexual scale, I'm probably about 13 to 15% bisexual. Mm-hmm. That's a, I, think, I relate to that number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Vanessa Hudgens. Is she's on your list? She could literally spit on me. She's sexy. And I would say Thank you so much for your charity and bow down and kiss the ground that that Minus the on. fact that that Coachella video was complete idiocy that you can't forgive. She's pretty yeah. sexy. <clears throat> like, she's so gorgeous. She's so talented. She's Gabriela Montez, even though I think Gabriela Montez is the mean girl, but whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> um, like, she is just so stunning. Yeah, she is. And just to be able to open your mouth and for that to come out, Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. And she, like, all of her, like, she just has this gross confidence that I want so badly. Yeah. Like, I will literally kill somebody for that kind of confidence. She had really good confidence even when she was really young, like, 19, 20. Yeah. I was like, you do your thing, girl. And, like, her, like, 2010s Coachella outfits. Oh, my God. Fucking had me in a chokehold when she had that little sunflower umbrella. Oh, my I God. I don't, I don't remember this. <clears throat> oh, she looks so cute. It was like prime, like hippie era sort of thing when mm-hmm. like everything was like, <clears throat> um, like the crocheted pants and oh, she was okay. with gotcha, Austin gotcha. Butler, like the Coachella fits. Dude, she they were just together turning forever. it out. I know. Forever. Ugh, I love them. Well, yeah. they're not together anymore. I know. Sad. I know. It's but like, she looks really happy now. Even does- though it's not with me, <laughs> like that is just something that I will have to just live with. You know what else she has? what good eyebrows mm-hmm. that's my segue do you want, can i talk about this oh please okay so i haven't seen you for two weeks either and in this in this <laughs> two weeks i got my eyebrows microbladed mm-hmm. if you're thinking man this bitch gets a lot of like beauty <laughs> treatments done you are correct <laughs> I, lo- I love trying things i don't go crazy but um I have wanted to get my eyebrows microbladed for some time. I've just been kind of scared because it's, you know, I get yeah. scared of anything that's permanent or semi-permanent. Well, yeah, it's on your face. Yeah. And honestly, my eyebrows are super fucked up from living through the 90s and yeah. getting through that trend. And like, 
in, I don't know, the late 90s, I was convinced that Natalie Portman had the perfect eyebrows, which went sure. straight across her face. Yeah. And I have a very high natural arch. Yeah. <laughs> so those all went goodbye. So I could draw in a flat eyebrow. I'm right. surprised any brows grew back. Um, and I've been wanting to get brows microbladed. I know a girl and like unprompted, I was looking at her and was like, I'm sorry, you have fantastic eyebrows. And I literally said that to maybe three people in my life. Right. And she was like, oh, they're microbladed. And I was like, who do you go to? Yeah. And that, that name was and number right now that was it and so um i went there and so i was getting you know but she told me and she's she's got tats and she was just said i gotta tell you though it hurts like a motherfucker yeah like that is that is some serious shit um i have tattoos it hurts way worse than any tattoo i got and i'm like fantastic um but here i am thinking i have crohn's disease i've lived with this for like 20 years i got a high pain threshold <clears throat> yeah i'm talking to someone who doesn't deal with chronic pain on the daily right they just don't know what real pain is. So I'll be fine. So I go there. They do the numbing cream um, on first. You looked so sexy with that. Didn't cream I? On. I sent Kristen <laughs> a photo of my, they had numbing cream covering my eyebrows and then like saran wrap yep. over that. <laughs> <laughs> Giving real toy Santa real oh, this. I, I looked like I was about to get like a, fa like a face <clears throat> cast made or yeah. something. Um, and by the way, I think it's called Emla cream. I'm not sure if that was it, but there's like a numbing cream called Emla cream. It doesn't do shit. I've had it for like when, when I was scared of needles, mm -hmm. they would put it on my on my arms before I had to get an IV or something. Right. No, you could feel everything. Fuck it. And so we sat there for the first, I don't know, hour. The first hour is like them shaping your brows, like kind of figuring out the measurements of your face. And there's a whole system they do. Wow. And I was sitting there, I was laying down. I could feel the strokes being made and all this stuff. And I was, the, I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. People think this is painful. <laughs> I also took two out of band before. Oh, okay. Cause I was like, I can't, if I can't have a panic attack, if it hurts a lot right. in the middle of the, yeah. I cannot, I have to go through with it. So, and I do, I have a prescription for it because I get anxiety attacks and I did not want to get an anxiety attack on the table. Right. So I took it. And then I was just like, man, I, I prepped, I took my anti-anxiety meds. Yeah. Like I'm good. This doesn't hurt. People are wusses. And an hour into it, she stands me up to look in the mirror and I saw she's just been like drawing on my face. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I was like, talk of real shit now. and i literally was like you haven't started and she's like oh no we've just been shaping <laughs> Fan fucking fantastic so she's like oh you'll know when i start and i'm like okay fucking rip okay dude they're not kidding this shit fucking oh, hurts sure it feels exactly like what it sounds like it feels like a micro blade making precision cuts that you can breath. feel yep. every inch of i'm sure and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm sitting here allowing someone to just cut me and yeah. I feel it all. And the thing is, here's one of the worst parts. The sound it makes, it sounds like you're getting your skin scraped off. Yeah. No one prepared me for the noise. So I am preparing you for the noise. If you're thinking of getting microbladed, it is like, I can't even do it, but it's like, I mean, it is just like, I need like, I need earplugs or something. Yeah. And you can just tap me on the shoulder when the neck is time for the next brow or something like yeah. that. So I know it's coming, but the sound is terrible. And like, I don't know, five minutes into her starting, I was like, that sound, uh, <laughs> isn't pleasant. And she's like, oh no, it's horrible. <laughs> it just keeps going. And, uh, the, the whole, that whole part only lasted probably 20 minutes or so. Okay. Like 10, 15 minutes each brow. Probably. I mean, I have to go back in six to eight weeks for a touch up. So but at I least mean, now you know. Now I know. And that's how it was with laser hair removal, too, when I got it on my lower legs. Yeah. That hurt really bad. But now that I'm prepared for it, it yeah. doesn't doesn't hurt as bad. And then then she put lidocaine cream on after that section. And lidoc lidocaine cream does work. Yeah. Um, It did its burn thing. Is that supposed to be burning? Yes, it's lidocaine. Okay, cool. Um, And then she did something called shading, which I think is when they actually use a tattoo tool. If you're a microblading specialist, please don't sue me for that. I specifically did not look at the tools because <laughs> I did not want to psych myself out. Yeah. Um, But it feels, it feels like how a tattoo would feel and it sounds like it. Yeah. But they do shading on top of it. And for that, you're numbed up pretty well. Good. And that you just, you feel, I mean, you feel it, but it doesn't hurt. So it's really just the microblading part. And then they finish. And can I tell you, right when I got in my car, First thing I did was text Kristen and go, I hate my eyebrows. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was like, I hate my eyebrows. They were so defined. Yeah. They were so dark. They were fierce. They were fierce. And I, and the fact that I had like no control over how it looked. Yeah. And I was just like, I couldn't deal. I could not deal. And I was just like, please don't down, please don't down, please don't down. And then I just like obsessively Googled the healing process. Um, and I talked to some friends that have had it done 
And they were like, oh, no, no, you're going to feel like they look ridiculous for like three days. They're just going to get darker and darker. And they're going to get kind of like a red undertone. Yep. You're just going to want our big old sunglasses. And like you want anyone to look. And then and then it's going to start to molt. Then you're then the skin on your eyebrows Ew. is going to start to peel ew, ew, like ew. it has a sunburn. That's gross. Yes. Um, I've already gone through the molting stage. That was two days ago. Yeah. Um, and you're not supposed to like help it along. Bullshit. But, but I cannot help myself. So no. I did. And nothing happened. Nothing bad happened. Um, but you're supposed to lose like 50% pigment or something over like the first 10 days. Uh -huh. Um, so they've definitely calmed down. I'm really happy with them now. They look really good. Thank you. And but Chris I also saw you day after and I was like, bitch, you're fine. <laughs> that <laughs> helped so me, that fine. helped me so much too. Cause I was <laughs> so self-conscious. Yeah. I almost like walked into like our workplace with like my hands over my yeah. eyebrows. I was almost having a panic attack that I looked like I had two mustaches yeah. for eyebrows. I was freaking out. And like, and then, yeah, it calmed down, but the, the red undertone didn't help. It felt like I had like yeah. redhead eyebrows. It was very weird. I think like, so when you texted me, I was at dinner and I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. I think what it was. You is were like, so nice to you. You're like, it can be fixed. It can be fixed. It can like, be. It's a tattoo, Kristen. Yeah, but like, here's the thing. If your arch is too high, they can like bring it down a little they bit. They do have methods. They do have methods. You know, it's, yes, technically it's permanent, but like, you know, there's, there's a little adjustments that can be made, especially if they're going to fade. Yeah. Um. But I think what part of the problem was, too, is, like, when you first got them done, like, right here, your inner, like, starting points mm -hmm. were so defined. Yes. They yes. were very sharp. And I yeah. was like, oh, she, I mean, honestly. Some people like their brows like that, but I don't. must be an incredible drawer, because those were very straight lines. Yeah, they were. Like, I was very impressed with her skills there. Yes. But I was like, I, you know what, I could see what you were saying, and I was like, honestly, any, any issues, like, I, when you texted me, I thought that you're like, have you ever seen Just Go With It? Yeah, but it was so long ago. Okay. Do you remember the girl in it who like goes to Dr. Maccabee because her one eyebrow is literally up here? That's what I thought was happening. Is that I Rachel thought, Dratch? Probably. <laughs> like, you know, I thought your eyebrow was like literally like halfway up your no, forehead. No, they were just way too dark, big, defined. Which, but then when she sent me the picture, I was like, oh, any issue that you have, I'm sure can be fixed. It like the you shape so was pretty supportive. much there. I was like, it's, uh, I was very deadpan. Like yeah. it can't be fixed. I fucked up. I should yeah. have done this. Yeah. And you were just like, no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. You're totally fine. <laughs> like, yeah. So nice. But then I, I Googled also like a bunch of images of the healing process and yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, it this great. is literally supposed to happen and it will get better. But it was like a nail biter for like the first three days. For Cause sure. I was like when are you gonna lighten up yeah <laughs> and then i have an event to go to this weekend so i was kind of kicking myself why the fuck did i think i should get my <laughs> eyebrows fair. microbladed <clears throat> 10 days before i have to go to an event why did i not research this more about how much healing time was needed but i think i'm okay i can actually if i wanted to like fill in some sparse areas yeah i don't think i need to right now but yeah, no, um that's great. yeah i'm pretty good i'm it, it's good i went to my get my hair done today just a routine like roots thing and my hairstylist who never talks to me <laughs> um ever like that's almost why i love her we just go in and it's just like okay bye how much do i owe you see you next see you in yeah. three to four weeks um she was just like oh my god what did you do she thought i had like a facelift or something like that she Beautiful. said my whole face was lifted and i was like okay now i now i know i made the right decision yeah, that dice board and that fucking uh, <laughs> the microblade microblade really Great. going to work there they uh, clearly i was like all right and then she just kept calling on my sexy eyebrows which i thought was really cute Gorgeous. um and then she kept trying to make me do like a shag haircut <laughs> because like i have a i have sexy eyebrows now i need sexy hair i mean Fair. she could she didn't say it but she wanted like just fucked hair she, yeah. that's what she wanted to give me and Gorgeous. i was just like the eyebrows are not that good yeah um but i love that they were giving off that vibe yeah I to love her that apparently you. me now so so far good experience i have to go back in six to eight weeks to get them um touched up right and when i left she said i can already tell you're gonna come back and say you want them darker and they were so dark when i left i'm right. like this bitch is smoking crack there's no way i didn't yeah. come back and maybe if they get lighter i will but at the moment i actually wouldn't mind if they got even lighter because i don't yeah. mind having to fill them in i also like the color they are right now me too i it's think they're at a great doable. at a great spot right now yeah um and i'm i mean i don't want to have to apply makeup every day and they were like literally melting off my face because of humidity and yeah. that's why but it's more that like I just wanted a shape to my brows that I just could not achieve because I fucked up my brows when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, and I don't, yeah, I don't mind filling in a couple areas of makeup. I don't, I'd rather be lighter than, I, you just can't walk back if it's yeah. too dark. You can't walk it back. So, um, so far, good experience. Probably in three weeks, I'll say I had, you know, 
lip filler or neck lift or some other crazy well, if shit. If you go done. for lip filler, uh, bring me with you because I want some. Okay. I just, I have such a problem with booking it and then going. I Why? want it because I'm a fucking lazy ass bitch. Makes sense. I mean, you don't have to go to the place I went. But I want to because you had a good experience. I did there. have a good experience. You know what I mean? I want to go mm-hmm. there. But I'm like, you said it was really far and I don't like going. It is by myself because i also know that like ryan doesn't want to go so it's like it's hard for me to do things for myself which is really true but we live in orange county we are the capital of like botox diasport i mean like there are so many places with good experiences around us yeah just go to newport also um how's your uh sakara stuff going it's good I'm skipping next week. Or <laughs> it's just? good. I think I'm canceling it. Amazing. No, I mean, honestly, it's been good. And the meals that are good are so good. I'm just kind of like, if I had a personal chef to make me right. gluten-free, you know, soy-free, wheat-free, dairy-free meal like this every day, yeah. I would be the healthiest bitch on the planet because right. this tastes good. The consistency is good. I like this. I'm full. Everything. But I don't like every meal they send. And yeah. it's such a waste because I'm such a texture person. Yep. And I look, I'll open it. And if it just doesn't look good to me, yeah. I'm just like big time aversion. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, that's not happening. And then I'm just like, that was a $25 meal. Yeah. Because they're expensive. They are expensive. But the good meals are so good. And so I skipped I skipped the week after next because I hated the menu. And I was like, there was like good. two meals on here. I like, I'm not paying to eat things that I know I'm not going to eat. So, um... And then I looked at the next week and that actually looked, they have something called a butterfly bowl, which is as beautiful as it sounds. It's like purple sticky rice with like orange carrots and like a pink oh, I sauce love. over. I mean, it's a beautiful plate. I it's love. beautiful. And I want to get it so bad, but I'm kind of like, but nothing else really looks good. So I'm, I'm more trying to think of, okay, I keep saying if I had a personal chef to make this for me, right? I, I would be the healthiest person on the planet. I need to learn how to cook with these ingredients. Yes. I need to learn how to cook with almond flour coconut flour beet sugar yeah that you can easily get at like sprouts yeah i also have beet sugar here if you want some oh you have it oh yeah how is it on its own i love it really yeah Just I, tastes like sugar i put or? it in my tea oh. it brings out flavors i like I really this. enjoy that sounds like salt to be honest <laughs> yes um i love that you're like still on this like health thing um i went out with one of our friends the other day mm-hmm. to this gorgeous restaurant in la called the ivy Oh, the paparazzi capital of the world. Is that really? Yes. Can I Celebrities fucking... only go there if they want to get papped. So it is really pretty though. Number one, I paid $17 for a uh, valet and literally had I just gone down one block, mm-hmm. there was free parking. Um, <laughs> I paid but, $20 when I went to Sir. So, um, so number one, it was right next to Kitson. Yeah, it is on I Robinson. I loved Kitson growing up. Um, early 2000s baby, you know? Or not baby. I was born in the 90s. But you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, I had a $65 plate of pasta. Bitch. When I fucking tell you, mm-hmm. I have dreamt of this pasta every fucking day. Oh, my God. I want nothing more than another plate of that pasta. And I'm going back next week because I need it. I love that for you. It was literally a pound and a quarter of lobster <gasps> and pasta in this oh pink God. sauce. I, every bite, I'm a not even kidding you. A pound and a quarter of lobster? Yeah. Holy shit. I'm not kidding you. My I'm like eyes, getting hot thinking about this. I'm having to like, oh, this my is making me My eyes hot. literally rolled back in my head so many times. Every, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my like, God. I want this pasta so bad. I don't know if it's just like I haven't been laid in a while or like what, but like it was orgasmic. I was like, what? No, the I'm fuck? like hot under the collar, man. We, it was, there are no words. Oh my God, I have there to go. are no words. So I, I have just, to go. I ordered a dress to go next time. And like, so here's the thing. If it's the paparazzi capital. Yeah, they camp out across the street. I'm very offended that nobody took my picture. <laughs> Number one, but fucking rude. Um, <laughs> but also- have you ever seen pictures of it or like have you ever been oh yeah i mean i haven't been to the ivy but i've seen pictures of it fuck yeah so the inside of it literally looks like your grandma's house oh i haven't seen the inside but the outside absolutely does it's a white picket fence yeah with the cheap ass christmas lights yes yeah Mm -hmm. but the inside is like yellow it literally looks like hannah montana's grandma's house with plates (laughs) on the wall and like it's so cute and quaint oh 
in the middle of robertson boulevard yeah so weird and i was like oh shit and then when we were trying to find parking we drove we like made like a circle around the block or whatever Mm -hmm. i don't know what the name of the street behind it is those houses literally look like brownstone houses from new york city oh yeah i was like who the fuck lives here and how many dicks do i have to suck to like live here (laughs) there's so many pockets of little neighborhoods in los angeles that are just gorgeous and so unique because listen i will do it they were so beautiful oh i would love to move to la and like live in one of those type of neighborhoods like imagine walking to the ivy and having your your pound of lobster pasta every day oh my god oh you would get a fucking DoorDash probably like there there are no words for like and like so we went to the glossier store we're having a lot of religious experiences clearly i love this for us um and we went to the glossier store and then we went to the alfreds that's right next to it Uh super cute and then we were literally just like looked on yelp for what looked good and that's where we ended up and i was like Mm. oh i love this place i love it here and then we had a caprese and like i don't know if they make everything fresh but it literally was the softest mozzarella i've ever had in my oh, entire really? life they probably the do heirloom tomatoes were so heirloomy it was just like <laughs> the heirloom tomatoes were very heirloomed i just and they give you like bread oh my god it just fuck them okay take <laughs> like our meal for like two people was like 250 bucks of course i love that though i would that's a good meal do it again I, i'm going to do it again next week i take my mom my mom and i are both obsessed with vanderpump rules like obsessed i know yeah. you watch it too i love um, vanderpump rules. absolutely love it and so for my mom's birthday every year in june i take her to sir which mm-hmm. was actually a suggestion of one of our coworkers, and it totally paid off because my mom loves doing it yeah um and we went this year we didn't go obviously in 2020 or 2021 because of covid right and we went this year um I paid 20 bucks for valet. There really wasn't parking around. It was annoying. It's not, in the, it's also on Robertson. It's just far. It's North on Robertson. It's like 10 minutes North from the oh, Ivy. I'm so pissed. We yeah. should have gone driven by it. It's like, it's really close to Santa Monica Boulevard. Okay. And we went and we, I don't know. It just, it's really nice. And there's exactly how it looks on the show. We got our goat cheese balls, Amazing. all the queen Stassi. And yeah. they're really good. It has like a mango sauce with it. You don't think hmm. goat cheese and mango, yeah. but oh, it's fantastic. Didn't and you also say you saw Raquel? I, the first time we went, I saw Raquel. Oh, she's so beautiful. And she's super tall and skinny. Bitch. And all I could think of when she turned around to look at me was like, <laughs> Bambi eyed bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the most <clears throat> backhanded compliment insult yeah. ever. If someone called me a Bambi eyed bitch, I'd be like, really? you think so you think i look like baby thank you um and i had to ask her where the restrooms were and i actually didn't know it was her when i walked up to her and she turned around and i was like oh baby eyed bitch (laughs) i was like where are the restrooms and she she was really really nice um so i did see raquel and then we went last time i was facing the door now my mom knows i know celebrities right like i will know the dist list of the d list of of celebrities i'm just like a fucking rolodex in my head so my mom always wants me to face the door in places like that so i can tell her who walks in and i'm just like i don't think anyone's gonna walk in i just it's like seven o'clock it's not really the night i mean it's like a wednesday i just don't think it's gonna happen we're sitting there i see lisa vanderpump walk in oh my god queen because todd Walked in before her. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, not Todd. What's her? It's Ken. Yeah. Ken, and then his last name's Todd. Ken walked in holding the fucking dog. Yeah. And I saw Ken and then I saw Lisa. And Lisa walked around the whole she's restaurant. She's so cool. She's so cool. And you know what? She's totally, she's gorgeous. Yeah, I'm sure. But she's not like a stick either. I she's had that. a really great body. Yeah. And I was like, oh, she looks exactly like she does on the show. She's good. Yeah. And the hostess was gorgeous i was like this bitch has to be on the show because this woman is gorgeous yeah. and everyone was walking and here i am being like i don't want to look like a tourist i don't want to look like i'm here for vanderpump even though i'm clearly here for vanderpump obviously um and i'm just was very like self-conscious about it and i i have have been when i've gone there before and everyone there was taking photos of everything oh, yeah. and with everyone and i was just like why do i even care there's people that live in la that are acting like this yeah but um i got a really good pasta i got pasta with truffles in it i'm a mm-hmm. i'm a truffle bitch i love truffles and my mom got a good meal but let me tell you the shining star of sir everything there was fantastic it was like one of the best meals of my life to be honest oh wow they have the best sticky toffee pudding mm. i've had i remember you telling me about this <gasps> i 
honestly almost went feral. I <laughs> like, I felt like I was drunk to be honest when I was eating. Oh, it. I love that. I was talking louder. I was, I literally was like motioning for the waiter and I was like, this is so good. <laughs> this is like, no, this is like really good. And it's only $12. This oh is only God. $12. I literally was acting like a drunk person because yeah. I was like, I don't know if it was the endorphins or what, but it's the best dessert I've ever had. And it was huge I love that. and it was twelve dollars everything else was super expensive right but these desserts because we also got the creme brulee which was fantastic and it was a whole like special effect thing where they lift the glass and it's like smoke oh how fun oh yeah the presentation's fabulous and both those things were only twelve dollars i was Gorgeous. like just valet costs almost twice as much as this <laughs> yep um it was great and then the next week we went to vegas For and i birthday. went to the sinatras and that's where i usually go for my birthday dinner yeah. And they have, usually, it's off menu, but they usually have it. It's a truffle pasta, speaking of expensive pastas. And there's like an appetizer size and a dinner size. And I chose to get the dinner size. Of course. Live your life. And it is literally, they bring out the black truffle. And they're like the shaver. Yeah. And they just shave it over. Guess how much this pasta was? How much was it? $175. I love that for you. It was so good. <laughs> it was, and I, I was like, do not start scraping the truffle let me get my camera. Yeah. And I was like, I need a video, this whole thing, because he just kept going. Yeah. And I was like, I feel so rich right now. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so fantastic. Yeah. It was the best pot. But I mean, I dream about that, pot- that pasta all freaking year. Yeah. It's I so mean, good. So we have to go. To oh, uh, pff, the we Ivy. still haven't gone to Beverly Hills Hotel. I know. So have you gotten a dress to wear? I mean, kind of, because I got a dress for that event <laughs> and a backup dress. So I have two dresses. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then we'll go. But I have to have this pasta first. <laughs> That's fine. That's so fucking good. Literally just lives front and center in my brain all the time. Like I'm, you're, are you a hyper fixator like me? Oh girl. I know, but I just want to make sure. Oh, before I I is okay. Yeah. I get really hooked on a meal and then it's like all I want to eat for, I could eat it for every meal every day yep. for probably two to three weeks. And then oh, I yeah. never want to see it again. Yeah. I mean, all the time. Mm-hmm. That's how I, and then it'll just like, it will, it will stick like an addiction. Yeah. Like I'll get Joe, like I'll Jones for it. <clears throat> so i also wanted to talk about another journey that i was on okay the star wars journey let's okay. talk about this for a second um i have yet to see episode four okay here's the thing okay we, last night we watched the first 26 minutes of it episode four is boring, boring. It, i was like so here's the thing have you ever seen have you ever seen okay. the movie zach and miri make a porno you referenced this movie before have you ever seen it? Yeah, one, one time a long time ago. Okay, when you go on Disney Plus and you see the photo of it. Well, wait, it's on Disney Plus and they have like it on a banner? No, like, so when you go. Oh, oh like, for Star Wars? For Star Wars, oh, yeah. okay, I was like, and wait, you what? See it? <laughs> I know that this was made in 1977, okay? I know that. Oh, you got that year right and every yeah. Good job. Yeah, I'm not a fucking... You know, you're like, I'm not a plebeian. I know. Um, but the quality of it is just not up of to course standard. It isn't. And I mean, when they're doing lightsabers, it's like two kids hitting sticks together. It's but then when I watch Zach and Mary make a porno, and it's supposed to be like a low budget porno, I can't look at it and not see Zach and Mary make a porno. No, that's totally fair. That's totally fair. Like, and then I watched it, and I was like, this acting is terrible. Oh, yeah. She just, like, Leia just falls to the ground. Like, uh. like no. I mean, to be fair, I don't know if she was yet. I think so. I mean, Carrie Fisher was, like, loaded up on cocaine for all those movies. Luke and her are supposed to be twins. Yeah, I, I think one I... One looks significantly older than the other. Yeah, Carrie Fisher looks much older. Yeah. She yeah. looks decrepit, saggy boobs, like, the whole thing. To be fair, they wouldn't let her wear a bra. So they had her what, running around in that white dress with no bra. And she asked Why? for one. She asked for one. Wait, how is this even a story? Because she's told the story. Why wouldn't they let her wear a bra? Because George Lucas's answer to her was there aren't, there isn't underwear in space. Bull fucking shit. What no are the kidding. men wearing? No kidding. Are the men wearing underwear? Of course they are. Well then fuck it. You know what? No. Because if Harrison Ford is not wearing underwear in episode four, someone needs to tell me so I can take a much closer look at these movies. Get <laughs> a magnifying oh, glass? Oh yeah. Big time. Like, I sincerely oh she was pissed she was pissed as she should be why the fuck did she do it she i mean she got i mean she was 19 it was kind of her first big movie she had done i think shampoo if i'm getting that right um with warren Beatty when she was like a teenager but this was she was 19 by the she way she wasn't allowed to wear a bra yeah they wouldn't let her not oh my god 
bullshit, I'm right? Literally getting so heated about this right yeah. now. She she got she got her bra for the subsequent films. But fuck George Lucas. I know. It's it's, it's infuriating. Holy shit. No, but she would talk about so it in her mad. one woman shows, in her in her in her memoirs, everything about the fact that she could not wear underwear because underwear doesn't exist in space. Yeah. It was so unfair to her. Yeah. She, also, she was kind of set up for failure. And she jokes that also in this, she couldn't, there was something, I think she had just studied acting in London. And so she had a weird British affect she yeah. spoke with. And like, so sometimes she's a British accent and sometimes she's got a half Z and then sometimes <laughs> she does it. I mean, she makes fun of herself. She's like, what, what? like when she's speaking to like Grand Moff Tarkin or whatever, she's just like, Carrie mm-hmm. Fisher has like watched it and been like, like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Like, she's been very open about, she didn't know what she was doing in that first movie. I also am just so jealous that her mom was Debbie Reynolds. I don't think she would agree, but I know she loves her mom. I like, I love Debbie Reynolds. I just... Do you know about postcards from the edge? No, I don't. But I know Grandma Aggie, <laughs> Aggie Cromwell. Is this Halloween Town? What the fuck do you mean? Is this? I, I've never seen it. Tara, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, dude, I've seen Hocus Pocus, and I I bounced out of Halloween movies out of that. I'm like, this is my Halloween movie. You've I never seen another Halloween, movie. Halloween Town? No. Didn't two people from it just get married though? Yes, Marnie and fucking. <laughs> Whatever. I had to listen to your Star Wars opinions. You can listen. To that. I don't know who Halloween Town is. I have. Here's the thing. You haven't seen High School Musical 3. You haven't seen Halloween Town. What the fuck is your problem? <laughs> I'm older than you. I don't care. You have terrible taste. I do, no, I saw Hocus Pocus and I was like, that's it. I hit the wall. This is my movie. I don't need another Halloween movie. This is all I need. And also as a backup, I have Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm good. And I remember Before Christmas is so terrible. <gasps> no, it's good. Halloween Town. It's not like tattoo yourself with it Halloween good. Halloween Town no, no is hate to people that do, but it's an original weird. thought. Oh my God, we are going to fight so hard right now. I didn't literally, say it sucked. I just have no, I just have, you know, no point of reference yeah, for it. Yeah, but Nightmare Before Christmas is literally the Grinch. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. How is it the Grinch? I don't like, I don't like Christmas. I take your Christmas. That is not the plot at all of the Nightmare it's Before so Christmas. It's so terrible. Jack Skellington <clears throat> loves Christmas. He loves it's it. It's terrible. That's why he does to take Christmas, because he loves it's Christmas. It's terrible. Have you even listened to What's This? Yes. Yeah, he's like enamored with it. He's like, oh my God, what is all this? It's terrible. I hate Christmas. I'm going to take your you Christmas. You know what I mean. Like, <laughs> Fuck. I take this from you. You don't get this. I take no. this from. It's so terrible. He was just bored of Halloween, and to and honestly, to be fair, so fucking am I. So I get it. Christmas is. I mean, Christmas is definitely significantly better. Yeah. Like, but no, it's terrible. It's literally the Grinch. It is not the Grinch. It's the Grinch. It is not the, it's Grinch. the Grinch. It is not. But to get back to Carrie Fisher, um, I also love Debbie Reynolds, and they had a they have a very love hate relationship i mean the fact that carrie fisher died and then debbie reynolds died like the, the next, next day, day yes but to be perfectly honest that's very i don't want to say typical because you can't die more than once but it's very reminiscent of their entire relationship and how codependent they were to each other and yeah. how close they were and how much they they bickered and they hate each other but postcards from the edge is a book that carrie fisher wrote mm-hmm. and it's a book <clears throat> basically about her growing up with a mother who's much more famous and a mother who like will not let her daughter be a bigger star. Oh. And so when, when Debbie Reynolds died, everyone was like, Carrie Fisher is fucking loving this. Like, yeah. do you see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Like fair. she can't, she can't, I can't even die. She has to steal that's my thunder fair. there too. So it was just kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and that's what postcards from the edge was from that. And like her massive drug addiction. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, Debbie Reynolds is a queen. She's a total yeah. queen. And toward the end of her life when she was accepting a bunch of awards and she wasn't kind of all there. Yeah. I saw her accept an award and she, and Carrie Fisher was kind of holding her up and it might've been her last award awards appearance, but she said she was talking about singing in the rain and she said, Oh, that's you know, and that's my favorite movie I've ever done. And then like mm-hmm. five seconds later, she mentions the unsinkable Molly Brown. Yeah. And then she goes, which is my favorite movie I've ever done. And you can see Carrie Fisher kind of hold her a little closer. Like mom, you're kind of, yeah. you know, and it was just really sweet how she was there supporting her. And yeah. <clears throat> Carrie Fisher, I mean, not Carrie Fisher, Debbie Reynolds. I mean, obviously she's a queen and we love her, but I loved how much she loved Hollywood. 
I know. I wanted to go through her archives. Me and too. Shit. I can't believe no one gave that like a, a, a genuine platform till after she died. Yeah. And in fact, I don't even think they did after she died because I think it went to auction before that. It did. Yeah. That and pisses I was pissed because I wanted it. I wanted them to open it up like yeah. a museum. It, exactly. And yeah. that's what she wanted. She has. She fucking has the ruby red slippers. I know. I know. Like I'm. Oh. I just love how much she loved Hollywood. It, yeah. Because it wasn't like a Debbie Reynolds museum. No. It, it was, was just a Hollywood museum. Yes. Yeah. From someone who grew up during the Golden Age, and yeah. I think that's I. I love Debbie Reynolds too. Halloween Town notwithstanding, I think Debbie Reynolds is a queen, and you I have I to love watch Halloween Town. I've also read like every memoir that Carrie Fisher has ever written, <laughs> and I love her. The one she published before she died, where she you know admitted to fucking Harrison Ford. I was like, I fucking knew it. You <laughs> can't do a movie with Harrison Ford. And not sleep with them. You have to try. And you're and you're Carrie Fisher, so Yeah, you have to just throw your hat in the ring a little bit. Yeah, you guys played you guys played romantic partners, so good for you. Wait, they're romantic? In the movies. I thought Ryan never mind. Doesn't matter. No. Han and Leia are like Ryan. I love you, I know. That that iconic line. Ryan told me it was Leia and Luke who were romantic. Do you not know what happens with Leia and Luke in the movies? No, I haven't fucking seen that. But I didn't know you were that, like, removed from, like, the pop culture zeitgeist about Star Wars to not know one of the most basic elements no, of the plot. No, I thought Anakin was Obi-Wan. Okay, I can't fucking tell you what happens with Luke and Leia. Well, no, you kind of have to. No, I cannot. You have to watch it. I, to no, I want to watch your you, face. I want. It's better I'm, for the pod. It's better for the pod I'm if I tell you. I'm not sure I'll be able to get through Are you, the r- other three movies. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We fucking talked about this and when we talked about episode three and Padme's one contribution as a mother, and you don't remember the thing about Luke and Leia? I thought they got together. They're brother and sister. Yeah, I know. And then when he told me that they got together i was like that's disgusting but they oh did- my god you thought everyone was just super on board with this that like this <laughs> well i wasn't sure if they knew that they were brother and sister um they don't <clears throat> um but- so that it's still perfectly logical in the second in the second episode in episode five empire strikes back which i think and i feel very confident saying this is objectively <clears throat> the best of the star wars movies um actually i really like episode seven but i feel like objectively empire strikes back okay they kind of flirt a bit, but she just does it to make Han jealous. So in the in the space between episode four and episode five, the plot kind of pivots and you know things have happened off screen. And Han and Leia are very like, you know, enemies to lovers thing. They're not oh, okay. enemies. They just get on each other's nerves. Yeah. But it's clear they want to like screw each other. Amazing. And Luke is off doing his like, who am I? Am I a Jedi? Like he's a bigger shit. He's not into leia he's not into han they're just his friends but han and leia have like all their the episode six is their whole love story basically like by the end of it they're like fully like i love you i love whatever okay and it there's takes like a... them three fucking movies to get that far two what f- two, fucking... two movies why isn't he in four yeah he is oh. so four and five are the two movies oh i thought you said in episode six that's where they say no I no love they're you. together oh no no they say i love you at the end of episode five. Oh, okay they start like, episode talk five about a fucking bigger, slow bigger, bigger burn bickering. yeah they start oh they start at, no i mean the episode five every scene they did the the normal franchise thing which is and it might have been star, started by star wars but don't hold me to that where in, in the second movie they split up the heroes right okay and they have to come back together at the end they each take their own separate journeys right and that's what happens luke goes on his own journey and han and leia to go on theirs and on everything doing with han and leia is pretty much reinforcing the romance that by the end of it something happens with han where they're kind of forced to now or never oh. like admit admit mm-hmm. and that's where the iconic line of i love you and then he just goes i know and it's just kind of very harrison ford and very sexy and if i and if, but the thing is if anyone besides harrison ford said it you'd be like motherfucker you're about to go into a pit and die yeah you can't say you it can't say it's like patrick swayze and dirty dancing just always saying ditto don't say ditto say yeah. i fucking love you like say so, it just like that i fucking love you i fucking love you bitch. <laughs> like, love you and i love you it's the difference right there oh god it's like kind of cringy whenever you see people i mean not that you're a voyeur and you listening on conversations but you know those couples even in passing where there's one that's like i love you i love you and the person's like yeah. me too oh love i hate you too and you're just I like so much there's like a certain amount of energy someone's not given yeah. back yeah you know talking about um this is completely off subject but talking about like people who listen in on other people's conversations not off subject then my mother is <laughs> the fucking worst 
we will be out to dinner. And she will literally tell me to shut the fuck up so that she can listen to the people behind us. Oh my God. I, oh no, I can already tell you I would love your mom. I'm this person. I was. I need to go to dinner with your mom. We are at dinner, ma'am. <laughs> Like, no, you were here to talk to me. No, I- I've absolutely told my dining partner to shut shut up so I can listen to other conversations. That's so fucking stupid. Then no. Why you have to dinner with me? Because someone's having drama at the next table and I need to know why. Go out to dinner by yourself then, bitch. One of my favorite things, as long as they're not keeping me up or anything, is when you live in apartment complexes. Uh-huh. Oh my God, so many funny stories of couples fighting. There was one time I was visiting my best friend and her husband when they lived in an apartment complex and... We could hear the neighbors fighting and we were all so psyched. Like we opened the window. We got, we like literally crowded toward the door. Yeah. And this girl was railing on her boyfriend and Good. we did in like, we don't even know what happened, but all we got was like, how could you blah, blah, blah. I mean, they were on the balcony right above us. Teen girlfriend. It honestly sounded like early twenties, but it yeah. was just really funny. Cause she's like, and it's my birthday, Adam. <laughs> and yeah, I remember the on whole the thing. Birthday. It's my birthday, Adam. And all of a sudden we hear this. Sorry. <laughs> she's like been railing on him for like 10 minutes and the final blow is and it's my birthday adam sorry (laughs) such a man (laughs) response we had to close the window because we were laughing so hard yeah such a man response oh my god i I wanted to be like girl he doesn't give a shit no he's just enduring this he's already checked out yeah and then when i lived at my last place which was it was a condominium complex but whatever new people moved in upstairs and they had an automatic lock right uh-huh. so if you're not there you can kind of hear it turning over it's like right. rawr, rawr, whatever so it's like three in the morning and since i'm an insomniac of course I, my ass was awake i hear him <laughs> trot up the stairs and i keep hearing this rawr, 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 and i'm like w- is where the fuck is that noise coming from right and i realized she locked him out good for her i love and, this and all i hear is this baby baby open up baby i can't get in <laughs> and this mumbling back to him being like rawr, 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 <laughs> mumbling mumbling rawr, rawr, and then being like i just i just want some water can i come in and get some water and like he literally that the, the baby <laughs> baby just let me in and i was like this is so good i actually called my mom and i was like my mom was up and i was just like the couple upstairs is fighting she's like about what <laughs> like she like, i'm so game for being a voyeur on other people's drama I live for it. I would love to have dinner with your mom. Oh, that sounds you, like so you fun. You and her can go out to dinner. I she would love to find she out. She would love that. I would love to find out why other people are fighting. Yeah. I love listening to that yeah. stuff. She gave me a passive aggressive bullshit answer the other day. She was what like, was it? Because I told her about the pod and I also told her she is not allowed to listen under any circumstances. And if she does listen, mm-hmm. we are not having a single fucking conversation <laughs> about it. I No, we're not talking about it. If you try to bring it up, I will literally leave you or hang up on you. Like, we're not talking about it. She was like, well, I just hope, you know, one day I get to meet Tara. Aww. And I was like, that's nice. Hi, Patricia. No, (laughs) Patricia, you better not be listening. My mom. I'll uh, block your ass. My mom. I can't stop her from listening to it. She's obsessed with it. I love that. And Hi, mom. When episode two aired... She knocked on my door and said, <laughs> do you want my feedback? <laughs> what was your feedback? That I'm wearing too many sweatshirts. Here's the thing. This is so what, what do you think I'm wearing today? So, um, hi, mom. Uh, you're now Jane. Jane. Her name's Jane. Jane. Mm-hmm. That's so cute. Hi, Jane. <laughs> um, I am your second adopted daughter. So nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> I think uh, you should know that my apartment is 67 degrees and it's freezing um and i think we've just kind of talked about like making sweatshirts and sweaters our thing Mm -hmm. so tara is absolutely allowed to wear her uniform which is a sweatshirt Mm -hmm. but she just the unprompted do you want my feedback (laughs) i was like it's nice that she asked i mean yes it's nice that she asked but i also wanted to be like no (laughs) you are not the target audience (laughs) why don't you just tell her no um i think i did um (laughs) I don't remember. I think I, I think I said no, or I was, I kind of very like cautiously said, okay, (laughs) (laughs) like, what is it? Or I was just kind of, and then the next time she offered feedback, I was like, if it's about the fucking chairs, 
or how I look in a sweatshirt. Yeah. I don't want to fucking hear it. I there, There's nothing I can do about how I look, mom. Yeah. I know it's a mother-daughter relationship yeah. and you want to tell me where I don't look good, but let's not. Yeah. Um, but other than that, she loves the pod. Good. And then her last feedback I got unsolicited because it's all unsolicited, by the way. I love you, mom, but you know you. And she goes, oh, you didn't say fuck as many times in this one. And I was like, mom, we were talking about people dying. Yeah. And she's like, well, you still say fuck a lot. But I want to yeah. I want to clarify something. When I was in institution school, a.k.a. beauty school, um, we had like twice a week people could come in and you could get like a, like a massage or, right. you know, the, the cheap stuff from a student. Mom would come in like once a week and she'd come in and we would, you know, talking and then somebody walks by. So a student that I'm friends with walks by and goes, oh, you must be Tara's mom. It's nice to meet you. And so we introduced each other. I'm like, how did you know she was my mom? And she goes, I just heard the fucks. Amazing. My mom curses as much as I do. Yeah. I don't know if my mom curses as much with anybody else, but right. I'm sure if you listen to my mom's conversation and myself, I mean, there's not a word we don't use. Yeah. And I, do, I would honestly love to go back in my life and, and find out when I started not giving a shit yeah. about cursing in front of my mom, because I think it was before I was 18. Oh, my, I was for sure before I was 18. Well, you were calling people cunts when you were 12 or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was sure I was. And I'd do it again, bitch. My mom, my mom does not like mm -hmm. that word. Sorry. Yeah, but, my, my mom doesn't like it either for whatever reason. But um, I, I would love to know when I got comfortable enough. Yeah. And no one else in my family can have that relationship. That's fair. Can have that relationship. And sometimes I'll be a little bit like that with someone else. And they'll kind of look at me and I'm like, oh, wait, that's not the audience. That's not the, that's not the audience. We yeah. can't be full. We can't be like full bore Tara right now. We need to pull it back. Yeah. Well, like my, my mom was like, when she asked to listen to the podcast, she was like, I was like, <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> I was like, you know, mom, I really don't think you're going to like it. She goes, do you say fuck a lot? <laughs> and I was like, yes, yeah. we fucking do. And a whole slew of other things mm -hmm. that I don't want you to listen to. She was like. Okay. I hope she liked well, the OnlyFans episode. And then she goes, <laughs> I'll tell you a story about OnlyFans and my mother. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> um, so we, um, she was like, well, if you ever make an episode that you think I will like, send it to me. And I was like, fat fucking chance. But okay, <laughs> sure. Um, so I, I would say two years ago now, no, maybe it was more than that. Maybe like three. It was b still back when like Trump was president. Um, Ugh, dark times. We uh, we were out to dinner for my birthday, mm -hmm. and where I like to go out to dinner is Capitol Grill. It's right there on the Strip. Oh, Capitol Grill is great. And Capitol Grill is unfortunately right next to the Trump Tower. And this motherfucker Girl. had his like motorcade going by. Oh, shut the fuck up! And I was he like, was in town. Yeah, and I Ew. literally was like on my birthday yeah i was like on my birthday adam on my birthday yeah <laughs> so then you know i sit down and i'm like disgruntled or whatever and then i was like you know what's fucking funny and i don't know why i fucking decided to do this but i pulled out my phone and i was showing my dad trisha paytas's only fans <laughs> i'm like trisha paytas you know who she is right yeah you know how like she had like her boobs done like a super fucked up yeah and so i was just telling him all about how you know she makes all these money this is what she makes mm -hmm. and then i showed my mom at the same dinner table uh-huh and she was like oh oh <laughs> <laughs> and then as luck would have it our server comes over oh, love this. and my mom starts telling him what we're looking at and then we show our waiter Trisha Paytas is only fan. <laughs> <laughs> this poor guy is just trying to bring me in my lobster bis. <laughs> and like, I was so distracted at the fact that there was a fucking motorcade. And I just was trying to like change the vibe that I went to Trisha Paytas is only fan. But um, when I was in Vegas last, when I went to get my Louis Vuitton purse mm -hmm. that I was very proud to get, um, I went in. And I made an appointment because if I'm going to go buy a bag, you better treat me like I'm yeah. like, I want to get all, I don't care if I'm buying a wallet. I want you to treat me yeah. like this is, you know, Yeah, you want the champagne, you want everything. Exactly. So I got, I made an appointment to come back. So I had my own dressing room where mm -hmm. I tried all the different purses or whatever. And as I sit in there, um, the really nice girl said, um, sales girl said, 
um, oh, do you want some water? And I said, of course I do. Yeah, and she was like, oh, do you want still or sparkling? I'm like, oh, still's fine. I'm not going to, I don't know if they're going to give me sparkling. I don't know if I'm going to get a bill for it. I've right. never been in a fancy place like that before. <laughs> and uh, she said, do you like Avion? And I just started laughing because I'm super awkward. And I was just like, have you seen the Fire Festival documentary? No, to I this- haven't. Okay. No, oh. that's why I said to her oh, too. Yeah, yeah. And you haven't seen it? No. Oh my God. Okay. So there's this guy in it. He's an older gay guy. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't know if he was an assistant or co-producer of this fucking disaster dumpster fire Mm -hmm. that was the fire festival. Right. But some, and I don't know why he thought he had to do this, but basically there was Avion water for the festival that was in customs or something like that. They couldn't get to it. And Billy McFarland, who was the ringleader of it, he said, you need to go down there and you need to suck the guy's dick. So we can get that Avion back. And this guy was totally like, that's a lot to ask, but yeah. I mean, I'll do what I have to do. And I'm like, this is, th- oh my God. The whole time you're watching this documentary, they're just like, why did they think this was proportional? Right. Um, so the guy's explaining how he had to go down there and he didn't have to, oh, um, but he good. fully looks at the camera and goes, I was fully prepared to suck his dick for like the avion water oh my god and like honestly it's like one of the funniest scenes it's the funniest meme and just like the photo of his face you like know it's happened it's just it's just so fucking iconic (laughs) and so she you know like maybe on i'm like (laughs) have you seen the fire festival documentary and she's just like and this is like a very nice girl who just wants to get her commission and is just like "Uh uh-huh and i was like avion water you know avion water and she's like "Uh uh-huh and I was like, okay, never mind. <laughs> I was, I was I'm sorry. I'm like, and then I was like, did I just sexually harass the, the nice sales girl? I don't think so. I <laughs> hope not. She was really nice. And then she sent me a follow up text if I wanted the matching wallet, which I didn't. But she was really nice. And I think she just could read that I was just fucking awkward as shit being in there because she yeah. knew it was my first like big purse purchase. Right. And she was just like so nice. And she was just like, oh my God, I'm so happy this is your first one. And she was a Aww. good one. But she totally was like, uh huh about it and i was just like am i gonna be like escorted out of here <laughs> like, for harassing like the nice sales lady i was so like oh yeah because i'm just awkward as shit and my you know your mind goes to the one thing you shouldn't mention of course naturally so but speaking of things we shouldn't mention um i'm gonna bring up something which okay. is karen moments okay <laughs> I, i'm i'm a white girl <laughs> that you are and i've had some Karen moments assisted by my mom who has had her own. Um, I try not to. Right. Obviously. Um, but there are times I have gone Karen and I am ashamed to admit it. And it's usually, and this is, this is why, because someone will come back to me and they're so fucking nice. Yes. And I'm just like, I'm a bitch. Yeah. I am such a bitch. Um, something tells me you went Karen recently. I, oh, I went Karen like <clears throat> yesterday. Oh, um, amazing. And it was, it was through email. So I felt more free to, as most assholes do, um, including myself. Oh, um, so no. with the nicest company ever. Okay. So I'm a customer with Chewy. Uh huh. Cause I have a fur baby. I have a cat. Of course. And I had a huge auto ship order get sent out from like last year that I had canceled. I know I did. And it was sent to a place I don't even live anymore. Right. It was like over a hundred dollars. I mean, cat food, cat litter, all this stuff. Right. The whole. And they've auto shipped something before that I've canceled too. Right. And so I assumed, and I also just want to get straight to the point that I was going to have to go in hard because this has happened before. Right. And I was just like in all caps, like auto ship was canceled for this <laughs> order in this subject. So I'm sure whoever got that was just like, oh, fucking fantastic. Can't yeah. wait to open this. Mm-hmm. And I, I wasn't like, hey, you dick fucker, whatever. I wasn't <laughs> like going off on the guy or the girl reading it. I was just like, like in all caps, like this right. has happened before. I cannot deal with this. I want to keep being like a, a chewy customer, but you guys can't get your shit together. I need a refund, whatever. Right. <laughs> I get an email back and it's the nicest person of in the world because it it's fucking chewy. Yeah. And treating me like my reaction was completely proportional, like was <laughs> psychopath was like, first of all, thank you for writing that email. I'm sorry you had to do that and you had to take time out of your day. We really appreciate that. You let us know. We will absolutely refund you completely. So look for that in whatever, like mem- right. how many days. Um, thank you so much for being a customer. I also went ahead and canceled that auto ship. So that should never happen to you again. We're so sorry. This has happened twice. We know you have a fur baby. Yeah. You know, would you like to send us a photo of, of your pet? And I was like, <clears throat> I fucking asked for a photo of my cat. 
I basically said, like, go pound sand fuckers. Yeah. And they're like, can we see a photo of your kitty? No. And I was like, I feel like the biggest bitch in the world. Yeah. And I, the fact that they treated me a psycho, like I was acting totally proportional to the yeah. event. I was like, I feel so small right now. And I just want to crawl into my shell. And then I put it on Twitter. Right. That I was a bitch and Chewy's the best company ever. And a fr- I mean, like multiple people were like, yeah, they, they're the best. Like they're yeah. like, I've only hired people that used to work at Chewy because they're so great. Um, One of my friends said she randomly added like chemotherapy pills to her usual like auto mm-hmm. order because her dog had to go through chemotherapy. And Chewy noticed that and sent her hand painted portraits of each of her dogs. Beautiful. <clears throat> so not to make you feel even more like a bitch. Okay, please do. I need to be shamed right now. Please do. So there are very, very, very few companies that I would ever, ever speak super highly of. Like, literally, like, gun to my head, Mm -hmm. which speaks, like, super highly of. Chewy is fucking one of them. Can I tell you? Like, number one, their customer service is amazing. Yeah. Um, Every time I've ever called, they've answered on either the first or second ring. And I can't tell you the last time... um, a large corporation has ever done that oh yeah no kristen's boyfriend ryan Mm -hmm. was also telling me what how great she was and he cannot believe i went stir yeah how how i went in at them and he's like call them right now i'm like what am i i have nothing to call them about he's like call them right now you don't even have to do anything just call them i call them two rings hi this is erica we're recording this for you know uh customer service purposes how may i help you and so i was like oh and hung up yep and he was like yeah but a person answered there wasn't like press one for this and i was like oh my god that's so true yeah and they so anytime we have ever you know because we've lived in four different apartments i manage my mom's chewy my dad's chewy and my Mm -hmm. chewy sometimes like they send the wrong thing somewhere whatever Mm -hmm. they fix it they don't even make us return anything they say just go ahead and donate it i was gonna say they asked if i could donate i can't because i don't know the people living in a new place but i was just like they're like donate it like don't like send it have, back. Don't we don't want to recover the merchandise. Yeah. Just donate it They've to a shelter. They literally express shipped us things when I've been an idiot and forgotten to like order him things. Mm-hmm. And they don't do this anymore. So fuck you, PetSmart. <laughs> um but PetSmart up until a couple of months ago would price match Chewy. Which was incredible because I don't know if you've fucking been to PetSmart recently. PetSmart I'm calling your fucking ass out. They're fucking robbing people. Oh, I'll call it any pet store that's not Chewy at the moment. I just want to build Chewy up. are robbing people of, like, being able to afford, like, dog toys. Like, Aww. I get Gig. Like, Gig is super, super, like, preferential yeah. for, like, his toys and his snacks. Um, He only likes one kind of ball. He only likes one kind of, like, sticky do, whatever. Yeah. Um, One of those, like, one sticky do at um PetSmart. 17.99 how much is it on chewy ten dollars are you fucking kidding he likes these little ball things that's a f- 3.99 to 5.99 or 3.99 to 6.99 depending on the size that i get mm-hmm. at fucking pet smart they start at ten dollars this motherfucker you've seen him with the ball he fucking destroys it in two minutes oh no yeah he does and then he he, he, he will keep like chewing at one waiting for it to squeak yeah and i'm just like dude it's not gonna happen yeah like- and he fucking he rips it apart and like that's that's his thing. Mm-hmm. But I also refuse to spend like every dollar I spend has to equate to one minute of play. That's it, a dollar a minute. Yeah, that's a lot. But like he will tear through. Like, um, have yeah. you seen the like lamb chop little? Yeah. He would tear through that in thirty seconds. Most dog toys for a dog his size. Yeah. So I give him a ball. It lasts him seven minutes. I'm happy with it. I the most I paid is you're $7. such a good dog mom. Like, if I get Corey a toy and he destroys it in two seconds, which he has done before, I'm just like, well, that was a shitty toy. If he really liked it, I'd be like, you got to find something you like the last longer, bud. Like, sorry. Yeah, he also has this fascination with these like little piggy things. They're so fucking cheap and they're so fucking stupid. But they make <laughs> the funniest noise, and he takes them so seriously. He's like, oh, got it, got it. It's so cute. 
Um, but yeah, no, I love Chewy. I will literally defend Chewy till I die. So now, and hearing that you were a bitch to Chewy oh, really yeah. makes me want to fight you so oh, hard. Yeah, but this is this is my. But you came around. This is my mea culpa because I put on Twitter and I've I prefaced every time I've said this on social media and now on the pod that I'm the bad guy. Yeah. I was the bitch. Like I was the Karen. For sure. And yes, I thought I had to be because it happened before and I didn't want to deal with multiple emails back and forth. But also now looking back, especially because I've worked in hospitality before, like I can't imagine what it was like to see that subject and be like, I do not want to answer this. And the person was so nice. And like I said, I mean, the fact that they treated me like a normal human being was an insane ask and they actually did it. Um, and then they care enough to ask about my cat. And I'm just like, and I'm totally going to send them the photo. Like, I'm just like, here, this is my little baby. Um, he has a psycho mom feel bad for him. Yeah. But I, yeah, Chewy's amazing. And like, I'm honestly so happy I was shamed. You guys go buy your, your pet supplies from Chewy, please. There was also some recent feel good story about them. I don't know exactly what they did, but I think something got shipped to someone. And their animal just died? Yes. Then they probably sent flowers. They always I think, send I, bouquets of flowers. I think that's what happened. Yeah. Um, and that is just so incredibly considerate. Yeah. I can't even. I can't even. That's just so nice. Um, and that's like, I mean, I'm, I f- hate feeling the stereotype because I'm a white lady, but I went <laughs> I mean, it was through email. It wasn't at the front desk. It wasn't yeah. throwing anything. But that also shouldn't be the bar to be a Karen. Like, we should be aiming to be nice to everybody yeah. and assume the best. But there are those companies that ruin it for everybody. Because yeah. they give you so much shit. Yeah. Or you'll have a completely reasonable reason to want a refund. Yeah. And they'll just be like, no. And yeah. you're just like, but why? Yeah. Like, you can't, like, this, like, this was broken when it was shipped to me. And they're just like, we'll prove it. And I'm like, you are the reason people Karen out yeah. because they've dealt with so many companies like you. No, I'm not going to give Karen's a scapegoat. People that are rude are people that are rude, including me and my moments. And I'm owning that. But companies make it really hard. Yeah. And every company can't be chewy. I wish they could. I know. But they're so nice. So my next goal, by the way, on top of Magic Spoon, Sakara, <laughs> like what other like chewy? Yes, we I want to get a chewy. chewy. I want to get a chewy sponsorship. I'm so up your ass right now, Chewy. I will send everyone to you. All our um, new friends who are joining us, um, you should all tag Chewy. Yes. Uh, or like <coughs> at Chewy. Um, and tell them to sponsor us, and we will send them. An yeah, email. tell them the way to honest podcast absolutely loves them, and like feels bad for like being a bitch but you um, know what you at least recognize it and you feel bad about it there are so oh, many I Karens feel so bad about it who like are absolute assholes and like think nothing of it and which like is double so down. scary yeah and then when they double down that's the weird thing like they can't be wrong in the moment yeah no oh my god if that was an actual conversation that happened on the phone too i would have been like i um i'm sorry <laughs> yeah i'd been like i'm so sorry yeah um you just asked me like genuinely about my cat and that that broke me like, yeah <laughs> that absolutely broke me um but definitely, and I can't tell you personally, and I know we're like, we're like mentioning a lot of companies or like procedures and places I go anyway, and places we go, restaurants and stuff, like totally for free. I can't tell you how much I love uh, hyping up places oh, yeah. that are good value, that yeah. people would enjoy, that are a good experience. Yeah. And I don't want to say for free because I would really love to get a sponsorship, but like I, if you are, if I have a good experience, I want people to know. Yeah. Well, also too, um, that like plate of pasta even though it was 65 dollars, it was worth every fucking penny and you should talk about it it was delicious number two there was a fuck ton of lobster on there i honestly like can't even talk about the amount of lobster because i'm i'm literally like this is the most turned on i've been like in a week like literally (laughs) my basement was so fucking flooded i like it came out and i was like all of this for (laughs) For me me? like oh bet bitch like (laughs) i ate the whole fucking thing in one sitting and i felt no shame and I love that you love lobster because it's <clears> such a like a, a it's it's a touchy subject for people. Some people don't yeah. like it. No, I mean some people are allergic up. to it, and that's a fair pass. But fuck if you're not, up. I do love me some lobster. I love lobster. Oh my gosh! Or I sometimes will watch videos. It's kind of an ASMR thing to like hear the crack. Mm-hmm. But I'll just watch people of of people like like cracking like like king crab legs uh-huh. and like taking the meat out. I'm so good at my cracking friend crab. Chelsea sent me a video recently that was I'm pretty sure it was Chelsea um and she sent me a video of this person who was like breaking across uh, like Mm -hmm. breaking a croissant in half and like all of the bread from inside came with one half and she was like oh i just got the crab meat of the croissant (laughs) amazing and then she's like oh the crab meat of the croissant (laughs) the croissant um so i feel like we have to address it just because um but tara's like a genuine bitch 
No, no, no. Okay. No, 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 like, no. Is that the no, elephant no, no. in the room that I'm no. super unlikable? We had quite the day yesterday on Instagram. Oh my gosh, And yes. I feel like we kind of have to address it. <coughs> and it came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, largely because, um, I mean, and again, this is, you know, it's, it's a small win, but it's a fucking win. And I think we need to, yep. <coughs> because um, we, we pay attention. Acknowledge it. Yeah. We pay Especially, attention. you know, if we're going to talk about things like sponsorships and shit like that. Um, we like, in my opinion, I think we went viral. <laughs> Maybe. Um, because I'm not a good judge of what's viral. Well, cause here's the thing. All I know is that when, <clears throat> uh, when it's bad, I know. But well, yeah, so uh, we posted our second reel on Instagram yesterday mm -hmm. and that bitch got a hundred fucking thousand views. Yeah. In less than 24 hours. In less than 24 hours. And when we posted it, we had 82 followers. Yeah. Which <clears throat> being like a super small account like that. Yeah. And we're trying to grow organically too. We're not going to buy followers and no. shit. That's uncomfy and that's fucking stupid. And we're way too honest. We're not going to buy fake fucking followers. Yeah. That's fucking awkward um although side tangent i do know people uh who have bought followers and unfortunately it ends up working out for them because they eventually grow yeah and I then know. that's why people that's why people <clears throat> do it yeah it's really annoying um but just because of what our title is i mean there's yeah. and what our like ethos is we, we can't there's no way we can't like do it. we gained almost like almost 100 subscribers yesterday I or know. 100 followers or whatever which in itself, I think is really good. Got a, a hundred thousand yeah. views. Guys, we're only like six episodes in. We're recording right now. This is episode seven. Yeah. That's, I mean, we're nobody. So this is, we just really like talking. We yeah. like each other. We're literally the mayors of loser town. Yeah. Like big for us. I, I was watching that shit and the views go up because I couldn't sleep last night. Big shock. And I was texting Kristen who I knew mm. was asleep. Yeah. Like 60,000. We're at, we're at 80,000. Like, yeah. I was super excited. Yeah. And then we hit 100,000. And, like, I think that that is so fucking cool. And that's such a fucking win because, like, I have... We even had some haters. That was exciting. <laughs> yes. Tara is so proud that we got our first, like, You hate can't thing. have all... You can't <clears throat> have everyone love you. But, um, like, I have over 5,000 Instagram followers. Mm -hmm. And I have had one photo get 3,000 likes. And our reel yesterday got over 3,000 likes. Woo! And we have significantly less followers than I do. I, and I think that that is so fucking cool. I think it's so cool, too. So if you if you watched it, if you listened, <laughs> if you saw it in passing, thank you so much. Keep supporting us. It means a lot to us. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was just a really big deal. That was really cool. And yeah. we hope to have eventually some sponsorships. And you know we won't take anything that we don't actually believe yeah. in or think is cool. Um but yeah, thank you so much, guys. We love the support. And that was really exciting for us. Yeah. And honestly, I love those reels because, you know, I know it's very controversial right now. And I'm with you guys about how Instagram's pushing yes. the video. It's yeah. fucking insane. It's Instagram, not TikTok. We're there. By the way, we're on TikTok, too, if you want to yes, check that please out. Please follow us. Um, our TikTok is looking very pathetic. Yeah, you, you it's, it's good. <laughs> um, but on Instagram, I'm totally with you. <clears throat> but if you want to be a content creator or if you want your stuff to get seen, you have to make the stupid reels. We all know that's how it works. Yep. And so we've been making these clips and they've been... I'm I'm really happy. I'm really happy with them too. I think they're funny. I think we kind of go on tangents too. It's a really good way to condense a little bit of what it's like to watch us or listen to us. Yeah. Um. And I just love people are watching. I love how how well it's doing. And there's a part of me that's like, is Instagram favoring the real? A fucking course, Instagram yeah. is favoring the real. That's why we do it. But a hundred thousand likes, not that much. Or hundred thousand views, not that much. Yeah. So thank you so much for engaging with it, liking it, saving yeah. it, sending it, whatever the hell you did. We loved it. Please keep doing it on the next ones. It was really fucking cool. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we like when we started this, we didn't tell anybody. No. Like until we were pretty much ready to go. Mm-hmm. And then we did it. And then, you know, I mean, people said stuff to us like at work. Mm -hmm. But other than that, like it was literally just word of mouth or like our Instagrams. Yeah. And it still is. Yeah. And then literally yesterday, it was just like, oh, my God, like there are other people outside of our small little bubble out of our small little friend group. Yeah. Who agree with us that Louboutins is like a terrible song, but it's also a great it's a song. It's a bop. Yeah. <laughs> like. And that was just really fucking cool. So thank you very much. And we're so happy that you guys are here. Hopefully you will stay forever and ever and make me best friends. And hopefully one day you'll see a Dear Media on the bottom of our icon because I would love that.
You want to go with D or media? I don't know. It's the only one I know of. Oh, I would want to go to Toast News Network personally. Oh, well, whatever. I'll yeah. take anything, but Dear Media is one that pops up. That's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Or like if Call Her Daddy ever like branched out and like had like their own network. Oh my God, I would fucking We listen go to, to such Daddy. different podcasts too. We I, do. I, I do like the ones you listen to, but the one that has had a chokehold on me for years is one called We Hate Movies, which is yeah. for like like movie dudes, like cinema dudes that are like have all like worked together, not grown up together, but I've listened to them for years and their their format is not anything specific to them they watch bad movies and they talk about it yeah um which a ton of podcasts do but there's something about their chemistry that is so hilarious and me and my friend actually went and saw a live show in la and it was oh, really? so How fun it was so fun it was so funny and the worst <laughs> part of it though was afterwards they were kind of drunk and they were just meeting with everybody and they were super cool to hang out and talk with and i had they have something called mailbag Okay. Where people write in, it usually has to do with like something that they brought up on the show or whatever. And it came up like of embarrassing stories in a movie theater. Right. And I wrote in oh, about dear. are you going to talk about this? I, I I will tell the story in full in a different episode. But I did write into them about an embarrassing story I had, and when I sent it off, because I'm a pretty good writer, <clears throat> I was like, "This bitch is getting read on on the pod." I know it is. And uh, <laughs> so we go to meet them. And I go, I'm with my friend, George, the guy who watches my cat. And he goes, are you going to mention that they read your letter? And I'm like, no, because they're drunk. And if they don't remember, that's super awkward. Yeah. So what does George also, do? Also, it would be really hard to fucking have somebody know that and then make fucking eye contact with them. Yes. I mean, the whole <laughs> world. I mean, anyone listening to the pod knows it now. Well, yeah, but like, I'm that person. Yep. That's me. That's- so I was just like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, I'm just going to introduce myself like I'm a fan. I'm not going to mention right. that they read my story. And I told George, don't do it. So we walk up to them, and the first thing George says is, do you remember that girl that wrote in about shitting her pants at the movies? <laughs> I looked at him like, stop, what are, you, what are you doing? Stop, stop. And he, they're like, huh? Because they, they had read it like a year ago. Right. And from that time. And he's like, you know, the girl like shit her pants at the movies with that guy she liked. Like, did, remember that? And I was just like, please stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> they like did not know. And he was like, well, you read it. And I was like, it's nice to meet you. I'm Tara. <laughs> And they were just like drunk and didn't know. Right. Um, oh shit. Now I have to talk about this. You story. do. I now have to you, talk about yeah, the story. You can't like sprinkle it in. So when I, when I wrote to them, um, I had mentioned that this happened because I had eaten something bad earlier in the day. The, the real fact is that I have Crohn's disease and I mentioned <laughs> this in the pod and I just don't like to add that in the story. Cause I didn't want, if I wasn't the one telling it, and they were just because they were the re- one reading the emails. I didn't want it to become this like sad story. Right. Since we were talking about Carrie Fisher earlier, I like to live my life by a Carrie Fisher saying, which is if it's not funny, then it's just true. And I just can't live with that. It's fair. And I was like, I love that outlook and I'm going to have the same one. So, God, I don't remember what year this was, but I will date it <laughs> because it was for the midnight show. This was a choice. It was for the midnight showing of the movie 300. That oh weird my God. sepia Wasn't toned it like Gerard Butler. Or something yes, like that? the wow. kicks the That's guy into the whole thing. One of the very few movies that you have referenced that I've actually known. Woo! It's awful. <laughs> um, <laughs> totally awful. And so the reason I even went to it because th- there was a, a ten year period of my life where I had a certain friend group from high school and someone in this friend group was someone I had a really big crush on, but I was friends with everyone in the group and all my friends were going. But basically for some reason, every time, even though he's like one of my best friends, I thought every time we were together was the time, like <laughs> something was going to happen right. with us. It made no fucking sense. But in my like subconscious, this is what I thought. So I was like, can't miss the 300 midnight showing. This right. could be the night. I don't right. fucking know. And so we go and there was this bitch named allison who was going and she also had a thing from he was a hot commodity oh he was a hot commodity everyone had a crush on him and so she was just like slimy i'm sure she's a very nice lady now would kind of always try and like slip in and so i always had to be on my guard and so we get in and i you know say oh i have to go to the bathroom because my stomach was hurting right what's what what's new this is my life and but i was like i'm gonna go to the bathroom first and then I, then I thought, no, I can't because I have to make sure I sit next to, right. we're going to call him John. I sit next to John so that um, I can then put my stuff on the chair and then go to the bathroom. Right. I can't let Allison, whose name I didn't change, by the way. <laughs> I was like, I can't let her pick the seat. She's going to put me all the way on the end with some, right. I forget, someone else I don't like that was there. And so I'm holding it. I go to pick my seat and 
success. We sit next to each other. Big fucking shock. We were really good friends. And and I'm thinking, oh, you know, the whole time I'll just, you know, I'll make funny little remarks about how stupid this movie is. And I'll just wow yeah. him with my wit because that's, you know, what every guy wants to hear. Some girl bitching about the movie that they're he actively wanted to see. Right. <laughs> like, what am I doing? And the whole time my stomach is rumbling. My stomach is trump- rumbling. I'm trying to game plan how to get to the bathroom and being like, but I don't want to go because if I'm gone a long time, I don't want the yeah. whole like, oh, she's been gone a long time. Yeah. And, and and yeah, you can say like, oh my God, there was the longest line. But like everybody says that. Yeah. And everyone's like, was there though? Some, was but there? to be fair, at the movies, if you time it wrong mm-hmm. and you get out just when the other movie has gone out, oh yeah, there is a line, and there's no way you're gonna know, no, right? But I was, I was too scared. I did not want yeah. John to associate me with shit ever. Yeah. So I was like, I don't even want him to think it might not be true. Yeah. So no, I'm gonna hold it, and I'm thinking I'm not five years old. I'm an adult. I can hold my bowels together right (laughs) there's nothing first of all if there's any lesson from the rest of the story i'm just gonna say it now so i don't forget do not ever assume you are adult enough you are man (laughs) enough you are woman whatever to win a fight with your stomach if your stomach is not working with you yeah you will lose that battle if it hasn't happened to you yet it will i'm just telling you and it does nothing to do with what i deal with just wait till you have food poisoning or something. Yeah. Just don't, just don't do it. Prioritize the bathroom at all costs, guys. So we end up leaving. It's after midnight, so it's like 3 a.m., you know? And so with those trailers and however godforsakenly long that movie was. Yeah. And so we're leaving. We're, and then we're all kind of, because we're all in a big group, we leave the theater, right? And once you leave the theater doors, that's it. The theater's yeah. closed. And we're it's an outdoor mall, and we're all kind of standing around a circle talking to each other. Oh, God. I'm wearing acid wash light color jeans. Um, I do not have a sweatshirt or anything with me to tire my waist or anything. And we're just all sitting there talking. Like I said, my back's facing nobody because we're in a circle. Before I even had a chance to comprehend what was happening, I had already shit myself. Like fully. <laughs> like I didn't even have a chance to try and clench. Like it just, <laughs> not at all. I was just like, oh, <laughs> And like I, it was almost like a like a trauma event where you leave your your yeah. body and you're just looking at yourself. And I like had to go into like literally like crisis management and like look at my options. Right? Who has noticed so far? Yeah. Is it gonna keep going? Yeah. <laughs> How do I extricate myself from this situation? Yeah. Unharmed and like unnoticed and like I I just I just don't do. And I was standing right next to him. By the of way, of course you were. So we were all circle. Okay. Route A is out. I can't go back in the theater. And Correct. even if so, I would have to walk past them. And then and my back. Yes. Yes. It's done. Um, and then I'm kind of like, I can't turn around to walk away to go to my car. Cause right. turning around that's out too. So I guess I have to find a reason for us all to leave and then hope no one's parked with me like around where I am. Cause yeah. there's like a multiple places to leave an outdoor mall. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I'm like, Hey, you guys it's getting really, really late. Um, I forget if I had a job or school. I made up some excuse. Right. Like, really like, I'm, I'm going to go. And then, you know, once one person says, right. I was like, Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'll go. I'll go. No. Yeah. And I'm like, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Um, and by the way, it, it, I, I still to this day, don't know if I got away with this, but, um, so I'm start backing up from where I am right. and everyone's like, Oh, we're parked over there. Everybody is parked in the other direction. Amazing. Band fantastic luck and so i'm like i will just kind of like walk backwards slowly and wave to them until yeah. they've all turned around and i will like sprint in the other direction right, right? i could have cared less if other people from the movie could see me i did not care there was one person i cared about seeing me and that was it yep. so he they, she turns around leaves and i turn around to go sprint and i hear this hey hold on oh god wait up and i'm oh like god. i want to die i oh, want I'm to so die stressed. and who do you think it is of course of course it's, it's john yeah of course it's, it's him and so He's like, oh, wait up. I'm parked near you. And I was like, what? Fuck me. Of course you are. How long can this go on? This has <laughs> been like three minutes already. I mean, we're talking someone shit their pants. I mean, this every second's critical. Yeah. The fact three minutes have you're, gone by. You're ending the, your grace period I here. haven't even had a chance to kind of think about how awful it just feels and how like i feel like literally like literally sit in it yeah i just like i'm like i want to like for just for me and what happened i want to die but obviously you have to crisis prioritize (laughs) right and so i was like oh my god and so i turned around you know not to face him thank god thankfully it was nighttime so that helps 
he runs up to me as i'm parked near you and of course i'm not saying a fucking word to him no, i'm not talking not. i'm trying to be the most like non-sociable person of in course, the world trying to get the fuck out i'd rather him think i hate him or i'm mad at him yeah then did she just shit her pants so <laughs> Um, I wait until we, 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 we walk next to each other. I keep kind of away and, and then I kind of reach into my bag for my mm-hmm. phone and then I do the whole fake mom phone call thing. And I was like, Oh my God, my mom has called me like a ton of times. You keep going. I really, I yeah. need, I need to stay and call her right now. And then he was like, uh, okay. And like kept walking. And mm-hmm. so I sat down on the bench and it was just like, okay, I have to now wait and to make sure he leaves. Yeah. Cause God forbid this was the night that something was going to happen. And he's yeah. waiting for me in my car for my phone call to my fake fucking phone call to be over. Yeah. And so I sat on that bench for 20 more minutes. Oh, still in pain, by the way, still oh, seriously sure. in pain. Um, <laughs> making sure there was no way he was waiting in my car for me. Right. And then I finally got to my car. And of course, then I let it sink in cause I was in my car. Um, and I just cried the whole way home. Of course. I was devastated. Of course. Devastated. And then it made it worse that it was because it was clearly because, you know, I was dealing with Crohn's disease and stuff. And it was honestly pretty early in my diagnosis. It was a couple of years later. And I really hadn't gotten a con- control of it. And honestly, you have to have a couple of those as awful as it is. You have to have yeah. a couple humbly moments when it comes of to course. that to realize, okay, when it comes to like the disease in me, the disease always has to win. Yeah. Um, and that stuff's never happened again because of that. I mean, obviously, <laughs> right. But this is not like a Wednesday for me. Yeah. Um, but you have to laugh about it. Of course. And of course I wrote in about it. Of, of course. course I did. Just because I I think I might have gotten away with it. Besides the fact that I literally called one of our mutual friends the next day and was like, I shit my pants at the theater, Maggie. And was like <laughs> just going off about it. Um, but, you know, I also told my best friend, she convinced me, you know, in a year, this is going to be hilarious. And honestly, it is hilarious. It is. Yeah. I don't really want, I, I still don't really want anyone associating me with ship, but you know what? That ship, that ship kind of sailed when I got yeah. diagnosed with Crohn's anyway. So yeah. you might as well own it. Of course. So uh, please tell me something like that has happened to you. Oh God. <laughs> please. I'm literally so stressed about telling you this story because going back to this day It cannot me, be worse than what I just said. Oh, <gasps> am I going to feel so much better? So for everybody who's... Um, not here ryan just shot me a look because he knows exactly what fucking story i'm about to <laughs> I, if to be so honest with you my forehead is starting to get damp and my armpits oh, are sweating I'm so I, and my hands are clammy i hate this fucking story but this was called way too honest so we're gonna be way too honest i fucking hate myself for saying <laughs> this out loud i'm so uncomfortable. okay okay do it do it, do it. so we've talked about my relationship on this uh podcast before yeah. i don't I went so long without Ryan even knowing that I poop. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Um. So uh, at this point, I had gone eight and a half, nine years. Oh, my God. With him. Metal. Awarding. Knowing a fucking thing about my pooping schedule. Shut the fuck up over there. <laughs> um, and then it just felt like. All my luck had just run the fuck out. It all caught up with you at once. Yeah. So we also talked about how um, then this was in our other apartment, but still in the same building. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we moved into that one, we also had to paint. Mm-hmm. Ryan's dad used to be a contractor, professional painter. Yeah. He knocked that shit out. So his parents, and this was over COVID. So okay. his parents came out. Um, we And we, what we had done is because we were moving from one apartment to like building to another, mm-hmm. we did a week overlap. So that way okay. we would have time to paint the whole thing and then move everything over. Smart. Well. <laughs> so his parents are here. Oh, God. We move into this beautiful new apartment. Uh-huh. And the one toilet, we had noticed like a water pressure issue, but not every time. Just... What kind of water? I mean, it sprayed like, you up the ass or it wouldn't flush? It, like it like it would flush, but like there was very little like pressure in it flushing. Got it. So you still have like a wad of toilet paper left kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I hate toilets like that. I hate the story so much. <laughs> I think you eat them more. Okay. So <clears throat> I forget who went. So somebody went to the bathroom before and I'm like, oh my God, I fucking have to shit. But like, because I had to poop, like it was literally going to take me two seconds. It literally took me about the same amount of time. As if I had fucking peed. Okay. Like, I was ready to go. It was game time. Which is the dream, by the way. Yeah. A fucking dream. I have very good control over my bo- body and shit like that. Literally. I go to flush the toilet, and I had just fucking pooped, okay? 
It doesn't fucking flush. Oh my God. Is that scene from Dumb and Dumber? And I call my mom and and because like Ryan and his parents are outside the door like mm-hmm. painting or whatever in the kitchen. And I was like, mom, I need you to talk me off a ledge or something because I'm panicking. She was like, oh my God, what's wrong? I was like, mom, I just pooped and it won't flush. <laughs> and so we were trying to figure out a game plan. And because it was taking so long fucking ryan or his dad came over and knocked on the door i'm like fucking leave me alone (laughs) (laughs) i'm plotting out i'm going to fucking die yeah and so i was like okay here are my options i love how we both have escape plans in our scenarios so i said and i was trying to talk loud enough so that way like they knew on the other side i was on the phone with my mom Mm -hmm. to like leave me alone so i could you know fucking process so it's like okay i have one of two options I can, like, thankfully, like, not to be gross, but it was clean, you know, yeah. like, really easy. So I was like, I can either take this plastic bag that I have in the in the closet and, like, scoop it out and run to the bathroom or, like, run to the garbage and nobody has to know. <laughs> or your first option. <laughs> I'm telling you, this was the worst day of my life. <laughs> or <laughs> I can fess up and we can have fucking maintenance come. <laughs> So I did what any logical person would do and I fucking fessed up to it. Okay, thank God. Against my better judgment. No, that was the good judgment talking. Oh, what happened? So she has shot me a look, by the so way. So we why. had painter's tape. So then I put a big X over it and I said, do not go in that bathroom. It is not flushed. That was, that was considerate of you. Yes. Maintenance comes. My father-in-law. It's a looky loo. <laughs> and so they come in to to do whatever mm-hmm. and he wants to watch them do it. Why? And I'm like, get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> out. Like, this is the worst day of my life. I like Ryan's finding out for the first time I actually poop. Like, <laughs> this is fucking terrible. And now my like oh father-in-law God. wants to no! <laughs> uh, no not only is ryan finding out the whole extended family's uh, finding out the immediate family's finding out yeah um so that was the worst day of my life they fixed it but i learned my lesson i never fucking shit in that bathroom ever again um so i have a question though because mm-hmm. this was my first thought mm-hmm. was there a plunger there was not a plunger okay there goes my there goes my because first we, my, my a scenario. so we hadn't moved anything in yet we, we were still painting okay so um, moral of the story pl- always put a plunger in first the plunger was not going to do anything because really? so we had a friend come out he also shit in <gasps> the toilet not on top of yours a different scenario oh, yeah, right? no, no, okay. this, was, <laughs> just this was like i don't know like three weeks later okay so he shit in the bathtub in the bathtub <laughs> <laughs> he shit in the toilet and then he flushed it, but like he didn't watch to see if it went down. And well, so at he, least he was spared. He, yeah, but um, it was still there two days later uh, because he then left. Oh, my God. And we didn't know. Oh, my yeah, God. So happy that that happened to us. Um, <laughs> but then we had maintenance come out again mm-hmm. and they literally took the toilet off. And there's a like sealant thing that takes like. The tube from the toilet and to the pipe. No, yeah, I've seen it. So that, instead of being a circle, was literally squished into like a little, like, little skinny, skinny ass oval. Oh, do nothing. I can't believe anything ever went down. Yeah. So even a plunger was not going to do anything because this thing was fucked up. When I fucking. I. I cried. Oh, I mean, the entire. Like, two, three, four days, I cried about this. Mm -hmm. I have never been so angry at myself because before i shit i said i thought to myself somebody just came in the bathroom should i do this is this smart because ryan's dad was painting the other bathroom yeah i should have fucking held it oh nothing gives me or i should have made an excuse anxiety than watching than watching bathrooms that you have access to go down one by one yeah and you're just like that's one less bathroom that's one less bathroom every time i'm around multiple bathrooms and someone goes into one i'm like that's one less bathroom Mm -hmm. i can use right now that's how my brain no. works because of situations like this. Yeah. I literally cannot believe I just told that story. I love you for that though. Thank you for making me feel not so alone, it but just... you went like eight or nine years without yeah. good for you. Yeah. That's, I mean, my, my, you know, if, when I start dating someone, <clears throat> I mean, if I start dating someone, if I start dating someone, I hope they put in as much effort to keep up the mystique yeah. 
as much as I will clearly do. Yeah. Um, let's, 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 that's, that's why I'm a big, you know, fan of the separate bathrooms, separate yeah. bedrooms. Yeah. Like, I don't even need to see you shave. I, I should wake up in the morning and you're just, you're just shaving because that's the way you are. Yeah. You just, a fairy comes at night and he shaves you. I don't have to see yeah. any stubble in the sink. Well, I will tell you yesterday, I had a very unfortunate situation at um, Olive Garden. Um, and it gave me the worst fucking stomach cramps. And they, you God deserve a raise for every day that you exist. Oh. Because that shit fucking took me out for nine hours. And I didn't even have to shit. And I didn't even have to vomit. It was literally yeah. just stomach pain. Holy shit. Let you me... live your life like that? Yeah. Fuck no. It's no. It's I would tough. literally give up my life and become a fucking potato on the couch. Put down roots because no. Some days. Some days. Not every day, but yeah. No. That And that's why I have, when it comes to bad situations to not have a bathroom, <laughs> I got a catalog, man. Number one is a road trip. Yeah. Road trip. I mean, if there is ever a situation where you got a plumbing situation home, you better know exactly where you can use a bathroom. Yeah. You need to know an estimate for when that toilet's going to be done. Toilet matters more than anything. If you're going anywhere, yeah. date, vacation, restaurant, work. Oh, if you have a job, and I hope you do, but if you have a job and you don't have your A, B, and C toilets to use yeah. at work, you better think of some. Because there will come a time where you wish you had multiple contingency plans. Yep. Let me tell you. you Especially if there's a huge gap and no toilet paper to hang over where people can see it. Also, um, somebody had sent uh, Tara a picture of them putting... <clears throat> I'm assuming they did it. They yeah. put <laughs> toilet paper over a crack in uh, the bathroom stall. I love you. I feel so seen. I feel so glad that we could connect on something. <laughs> um, and if you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, um, our first episode ever, we talked about our top 10 biggest pet peeves. And number mm -hmm. one on my fucking list is the gap between uh, the wall and the, you know, bathroom stalls where you can actually fucking see people's bodies when they're going to the bathroom. Where there's no reason for that to exist except for bad engineering or lazy maintenance. Yeah. So um, I appreciate you, person who sent that picture in. And speaking of people who send things in, by the way, we love this. Um... I got two comments about um, our Christian meal delivery service. I love this. So one, and I feel like you mentioned this, <clears> but I might have missed it. But someone mentioned a really good one, which was, you know, obviously the Last Supper. Brilliant. Fantastic. But I do think that I say brilliant because I also said it. But I'll have to go back and listen to it. Then you have both brilliant minds. <clears throat> and fair. then I got another one, which will not work if you're a genuine Christian meal delivery service and like your, your goal is to promote the word of Jesus and, yeah. you know, do the, what did, Oh God, what did they call that? The, the great, Oh fuck. Sorry, Christians. I, whatever the, you know, when Jesus was like, go and spread the word and the great something, I forget. Anyway, um, it was about being a missionary. Basically. If that's your goal with the delivery service, this ain't the, the, Are you talking about the, the disciples. Name. No, it wasn't. It was when he was going up to heaven after he'd come back oh, from the oh, dead oh. and done his, you know, world tour. Yeah, his and resurrection. Going, yes, and he was. He it was called the great. And the second we stop recording, it's going to come oh, yeah. to me because ain't that how it works? But um, I still love this name, Sacrilicious. I love it. Fantastic, <coughs> Sacrilicious. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. So if you have an ironic Christian meal yeah. delivery service, it's got the perfect name for you guys. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. Mm -hmm. I I really would like for somebody to do that because I would subscribe to that. One thousand. <laughs> this is sacrilegious. This is so good. It's sacrilegious. Yeah, it's giving like Jersey Shore vibes because there used to be this show called Jerseylicious, I believe it was called. Oh God, I don't remember that. I know it I was Jersey Shore, but it was the tackiest of the tacky in terms of like reality TV. It was basically about the salon mm -hmm. in Jersey, and like doing all those beehive hairdos and shit. Yeah, and love like it. it was so trashy, but it was just so good. Yeah, I love it. I love trash. Like, what was it? My <clears throat> big fat gypsy wedding or something? Which yeah. I know you can't say anymore, but that's the name of the show. Yeah, like it was something like that. Have, did you see the photos of Teresa Giudice's uh, wedding? I did. How did she walk with that hair? But also, what the fuck did her veil say? Oh, it was something in Italian. And it the only reason so I beautiful. know that was because half of it was um, a, a, a phrase from Death Becomes Her. It was like, sempre vida, live forever, which is from Death Becomes Her. So I saw sempre um, on there. So I don't know if sempre is the live or the forever part. But one of those words, I think. I don't know. If you speak Italian, let us know if we're wrong. But like, I she knew had, she had money, but I didn't think she had that much money. 
Well, that was a big fucking fancy ass wedding. Well, the hair alone cost $10,000. I believe it. But I mean, she might not have that money. I mean, she's already been to jail for actually not having the money she yeah, appears to have. But also too, like that was a crime against the government. Good for you. Honestly, fucking fair. <laughs> fucking fair. Good for you. Yeah. You didn't hurt anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Pop off. So, sure. There may be a couple more potholes on the freeway, but and like if, whatever. Yeah, and if it turns out that there like was like, I don't know, like elder abuse or something please let us know yeah but if unless that unless, if it was just what we think it was then yeah you know, you're totally right do it fuck the government yeah crimes against scary you're like mm, no but yeah mm, eat the rich we're whatever. giving we're, whatever we're giving our fbi agents that follow us good content hi. right hi how you doing ron <laughs> <laughs> sorry i don't date enough for you here's <laughs> yeah. here's some here's some treason here's some light treason for you <laughs> yeah anyway there you go we better stop here we did have a topic but we're gonna move it to next week because honestly we just got too caught up in our embarrassing stories and we hope you liked that pivot uh if not you'll like our more formatted episode and next like, week um not to put any threats out there but i'm gonna put one out there if one of you fuckers or at least not a couple of you fuckers also write to us and tell us your embarrassing stories oh i did God. not just fucking tell you guys that i took a shit and yeah. my fucking father-in-law wanted to watch them clean it. <laughs> like you fucking better write in right now and tell me what fucking embarrassing stories you got for me because you Please. need to make me feel better about yes. this and, th- and this is i'm feeling very vulnerable <laughs> mine already got read on a podcast like five years ago yeah. but now i'm now i'm owning it yeah um and this i'm not against my will thanks george um i'm owning it and putting a face to it so we um love embarrassing stories because yes, yes they make us feel less alone just like we hope these stories made you feel less alone yeah or if it hasn't happened to you yet you can be like oh my god nothing's been that bad yeah like i shit my pants but not next to the guy i wanted to marry when i was 20 well, you know? yeah. like- and also i mean if this were to happen to you in the future you know what at least, you know, we gave you some alternative routes to Dude, hopefully like get out of and, it. And alternative routes. And, oh, also, if you have suggestions for how this could have been handled better, I would love to know. Oh, I please. think I did pretty well considering, but I would love to know. Be like, why didn't you do this? I'll be like, why the fuck didn't I do that? I should have just Hulk smashed the fucking toilet and like dropped down to the <laughs> apartment the toilet, behind me. The toilet just broke, you guys. <laughs> why I was on it. I hadn't even flushed it yet. <laughs> what the hell yeah, happened? Not me not little gentle fragile little me yes if someone is like you could have just jumped out the window that's not a real suggestion no i want a real suggestion because i i lo- like i said i'm a logic person i like seeing how things work and if yeah. i have a blind spot i want to know because as much as i prepare for this to happen again it likely will happen again because i have been humbled yeah i have been humbled and you should be humbled absolutely that yeah. is my if there is anything from this podcast i can impart to anybody it's do not think you can be stronger than your body. <laughs> what, whatever it wants to do, it's going to do. And if you have an inkling about maybe not using that particular restroom, listen to yourself and don't use that one. And have your backup toilets. Have your backup <laughs> toilets, guys. Yeah. And that's our parting advice for today. Have a great night, guys. We'll see you next week. Please Bye. come back after that. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>